I'm Duncan McLeod, and this is Tech Central. Uh, now, an interesting bit of news came across my desk a bit earlier today, and that's that ShopRite Group, which owns brands, of course, including Checkers, has announced it's piloting a concept store in Cape Town that doesn't have checkout counters. In fact, it's powered by cameras and artificial intelligence software. So the store knows when you've put an item in your basket and uh, when you uh, presumably get to the electronic checkout, we're going to find out some more detail of exactly how it works now. You can tap your card and off you go. Uh, it sounds kind of similar to what Amazon has been doing with Amazon Go stores in parts of the US and I think in London as well. And it's all part of a newish ShopRite division called ShopRite X or ShopRite to the power of X. I'm not quite sure which of those it is. Our guest will correct me in a moment if I'm incorrect. But uh, Neil uh, Schroeder is head of or chief of strategy and innovation at the ShopRite group. Neil, thanks for making the time to talk to me today. Thanks, Duncan. Great. Well, uh, interesting announcement uh, this morning from the ShopRite uh, group. Um, but before we talk about Checkers Rush, which you can see, uh, in the background here, which is the new store, concept store that you are piloting in Cape Town. Tell me a little bit about ShopRite X, or was it ShopRite to the power of X? What is it What is it? this division does? So ShopRite X uh, was what we officially unveiled today. It's, it's actually been operating for about a year, but under the radar on, on lots of technology-driven innovations for our retail business. Mm -hmm. And it's really um, about using the best of, of, of digital uh, data science and, and talent to build what we call a smarter shop, right? Make uh, you know almost computer and and AI assisted decisions, and just refine our business to the point where we make fewer mistakes and do do more of the right stuff. So, part of a broader strategy of what we've called precision retailing, and our CEO Peter Engelbrecht has spoken about it to investors for a few years. And yep. Shopart X is about being the kind of the spearhead of this digital innovation, and we operate in a very very different way. So today was the official unveiling of of Shopart X. Fascinating. So there are already 250 people in this team. So it's 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 quite a quite a business. I know that data scientists in South Africa are in in quite short supply. Have you been able? Have you found it uh, relatively easy to staff up this division, or has it been a bit of a struggle? So the, I, I think that's part of the reason why we 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 launched ShopRite X. I think we recognise that um, new retail, as we call it, requires slightly different ways of working, and we really want to be a place that the country's brightest minds want to come and work. And so our offices are different. I mean, we, 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 we do things very, very differently to the traditional model of, of, of retail delivery. And, you know, it is, it's, it, we've, we've hired a lot of data scientists in the last year. The beauty of, of the attraction of working on ShopRite is that we're the continent's biggest retailer. Uh, we launched our extra savings reward program just over uh, 20 months ago. Yep. And we've signed up a million customers a month since then. So, we have almost a petabyte, which I'm told by people much cleverer than me, is a lot of data uh, in our right. customer data lake. We've got 20 million South African adults swiping their cards at a, at a rate of 450 swipes a second in our business. And it gives us access to the most incredible problems for data scientists to solve. When the best time of the month is to promote for Duncan. Which That's products amazing. pull into the store? Which products does he add to his basket? So uh, the, the challenges I generally would bring the, the best data scientists to us. Fascinating. And this division was also responsible, I believe, for the launch or the development of Checkers 6060, which, of course, has been a runaway success in the e-commerce market in South Africa. Um, just, just give me some stats on Checkers 6060 and how big it is now. So 6060 was was done by our internal development team with, with third-party partners, uh, South African startups at their best. It was built in less than eight months, which I think for a enterprise e-commerce business is is really no time at all yeah and the it's it's gone from strength to strength so in as at the end of june which is our end of our reporting period we had one and a half million people that had downloaded the app uh, it was up you know it's triple what it was in june uh, this time last year and we, we just see it growing from strength to strength um we had a we had a great proposition that hadn't been seen in south africa before which mm. is 60 minute delivery we tried the name 6060 was actually built on uh, trying to be, make it simple enough to shop in 60 seconds and then get a, a delivery in under 60 minutes. So that's why, hence the name 6060. And we were a bit of good luck and timing as well. When COVID hit and lockdown happened, everybody became an online shopper. And then we had to scale pretty quickly for out of beta phase into public launch. But the business is growing tremendously and it's, it's really, really positive and customers have, have, have loved what we've built. 
I was going to say that, um, I mean, you, the, the lockdown must have done you a lot of favors. Um, people sitting at home uh, don't want to go to the shops, don't want to catch COVID, um, encouraged to stay at home. So uh, suddenly you've got this propos- this value proposition on your hands, which you had to scale very quickly. There must have been some teething problems, though, going from, going from here to here in a very sp- a short space of time. Take us through some of the challenges you faced. Well, first of all, I think 60-minute delivery was ambitious when it was in, in nine pilot stores, which is where we, where we launched. Um, I think the only other grocery chain probably took about two or three weeks to deliver your food when lockdown hit because of the surge in demand. And so to scale was our biggest challenge. You know, we were still kind of working out the kinks. And um, it, well, what happened was that we had to kind of go back to same-day delivery, not 60-minute delivery, as the demand kind of almost overwhelmed the capacity available. And we were happy, though. I mean, within a couple of weeks, we had scaled, you know, we've, we've created almost 3,000 new jobs in 6060. And we scaled, you know, from a handful of motorbikes to 1,500 motorbikes in a couple of months. So the hardest part, it felt sometimes like you were running through a hailstorm with your eyes open. It wasn't easy and, and, and it was a bit hairy and it, it, it was round the clock work. But, you know, it was all, um, you know, giving customers what they wanted. And, and it's given us a dominant position in the on-demand grocery space now. Fascinating. Tell me a bit about your background, Neil. Have you always been in retail? I've, I've been at ShopRite for 17 years. So my background was the marketing director of ShopRite for a decade and then you know, fell in love with the intersection of technology and customers and particularly customers getting the power of the smartphone in their hand. And you know, the, the power shift was dramatic. Customers yeah. get the lowest prices, customers can compare prices and customers want you to do more of the work. So we launched a new, like a strategy and innovation team three years ago. And then a year ago, we, we kind of wrapped it up and ramped up the, the hiring under the ShopRite X banner. And uh, we, today we're sitting in this beautiful new purpose-built building. Yeah. Uh, and it's built right above our flagship checkers store. And it's, it's great. We're close to the retail business. We test our products with customers and see what works. And, and we're quite close to the coalface. Right. So, so is the idea really to run the ShopRite X business as more of a startup than, a, than part of a big corporate? We like to say we want, the, we want the mind of a startup, but the soul of a grocer. You know, our, our ambition is still making sure customers can pay less for their groceries every day yeah. and making shopping or grocery shopping more affordable and not to the 1% in South Africa, to everybody. And uh, the, the, the digital unit's ambition is just making sure that we can move at a faster pace so we look a little bit more like a technology company when you come here, and it is just about making sure we can test, learn fast, fail fast, and, and then uh, follow the value in, in what customers like. Great stuff. So uh, let, let's talk a bit about Checkers Rush then, which you announced today, and the picture again behind me shows you your store in Brackenfell where you're testing this uh, technology. Uh, I believe you're testing it with employees rather than customers just at the moment. Um, but take us through why you're piloting this, what you're hoping to achieve uh, with this pilot and uh, whether you plan to roll this out more broadly at some point. So Checkers Rush is just our latest experiment. So our team is encouraged by our CEO to experiment a lot. Uh, and we apply, I think, the best of experimentation and curious minds to reimagine shopping. And so if you think about what 6060 was about, we, we, talk, we, we call our internal teams friction killers. We look for friction in the shopping experience and then we try to use data, tech, or smartphones to get rid of the friction. And 6060 removed the need to go to the store and pick the stuff yourself. Right. So you can watch a picker picking your items in real time. You can watch it on the bike come in real time and you know to the minute when it's coming. That wasn't possible 10 years ago. The power of smartphones being location aware real-time push notifications, GPS location, all that stuff allows us to do it. Checkers Rush is one of many experiments going on in our building here. And it's, it's, it's built on the premise that, you know, maybe for, for a small grab-and-go store, maybe there is this concept where there is no checkout. Mm. You know, it is a friction point in retail. When stores get busy, you queue. And so it, it, it's using cameras in the ceiling uh, to identify what products customers are taking off the shelf. And we are u- using our employees to give the algorithms enough hours of footage to start identifying 100% of the time exactly what the product was. Right. So you scan in with a QR code on the Checkers Rush app. You pick what you want, and it's grab and go stuff, lunch or snacks or a Coke or a Red Bull, and you just walk out. And then the algorithms go, we think it's that, and then we bill it to your credit card. So we're trying to get all our staff to use it as frequently as possible. And then 
when we're comfortable that it's uh, accurate enough and it can scale, then we, we're hoping we can open something up to the public when we're confident. So you literally pick up the goods you want and walk out. You don't even need to tap your, your bank card at the exit. No, no. So much like Uber, you load your credit card or your debit card to your profile in the app, and then we bill you autonomously. So it's, it's quite a surreal experience. It feels like you're stealing. And then a few <laughs> minutes later, you get the invoice and you, you, you see it was accurate, which is it's a, it's a crazy sensation. Yeah. But it, it really is just reimagining. It's almost like a, um, it, it's a store that requires nothing but technology. Obviously, you start by training the algorithms, and that's why it's only about 40 products for now. Uh, it needs a lot of work to scale, but it's really, really exciting stuff. I guess an obvious question is, is would this work in, in South Africa with our high crime rates and propensity for shoplifting? I, I was inspired by the Amazon Go store and they pioneered this concept. And, you know, you, the, the levels of, you, you apply security to these concepts. And I think it's something we'll tackle when you have to get into a real world example where it's not employees and it's customers. But um you know, typically these things are controlled. It's limited assortments. It's grab and go, and 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 there's there's enough security measures around it to to prevent it um, really running away with you. And you know, the 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 response from customers is is pretty good. There will always be humans, you know, supervising and supervising the algorithms and things like that. But it really just a, an example of thinking about retail uh, in a brand new way. And when do you start testing? If you do with real world customers. We don't have a timeline now when we're confident that it is, uh, it's scalable and accurate every time. So typically these things need hundreds and hundreds of hours of footage and, you know, you've got to throw everything at it. Uh, People in hoodies, people who are, you know, dropping things on the items, small kids, adults, all that kind of stuff. So lots of learnings, but it's super, super exciting. I think it really just represents, uh, you know, trying new things. These things don't have to happen in Silicon Valley. We're in Brackenfell here and we're trying to solve African retail challenges, you know. Um, It's no different to what we've done with our USAFE container stores where we're shipping containers and drop them in the middle of of rural or tribal areas and bringing retail to It's it's, it's just using a bit of technology. It's fascinating. I, I, was, I was very interested in that you're using cameras and I know Amazon Go uses cameras as well. And I know some of the other concept stores where this is being piloted around the world are using cameras. Um, wh- why cameras in particular to, to do this? Why not use, for example, RFID tags or some other technology? Yeah, RFID typically uh, on the volumes you do in grocery or food, the RFID tags are prohib- still prohibitively expensive. Ah. You know, as a, as a business, we sell 7 billion items a year. You, you know, you can only think about 7 billion RFID tags. Um, the, you know, Amazon use a combination of sensors as well, which are very expensive. But to get to, you know, four, five, 6,000 products, you need a combination of cameras and sensors. But the, the machine vision technology has advanced so quickly that it is getting incredibly accurate. And, uh, you know, it's used for security. And I'm sure you see in a lot of estates nowadays, you've got, Mm. you know, AI-assisted alerts for behavior or body language that looks suspicious. So it really is the the sky's the limit, and we're really just scratching the surface. Fascinating. And what's what's the feedback been from your employees who have used the service so far? Uh, There's a lot of guilt when people walk out. (laughs) (laughs) We only launched it a, a, a month, uh, sorry, a week ago. So we've got lots of kinks to iron out, but you know, it, it, it's getting a great response. And yeah, we're hoping to get it up to scale quite quickly. It's it's it's, it's something new and it's interesting. You know, you, you're standing outside that Amazon Go store in, in New York. I remember people are shopping there just to test the technology. It almost doesn't matter what you buy. So I find myself buying 600 chocolates a day just for the experience. <laughs> Fantastic. Neil Schroeder is uh, Chief of Strategy and Innovation at ShopRite Group. Look forward to uh, seeing how this new division uh, unfolds. Congratulations. uh, And thank you for talking to Tech Central today. Much appreciated. Thanks, Duncan. Thanks for the opportunity.